the dermatomes drawn onto an illustration of the body in a single image is called a dermatome map. And if you've managed to work your way through a few textbooks, you may have noticed that they don't always look the same. This is due to the fact that several different dermatome maps have been proposed over the years by different researchers, each established using different methods. And let me give you a word of warning, none of them are perfect. Each have their own flaws, which we'll discuss a little more as we work through the tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at the two most popular variations of the dermatome map. The first dermatome map we're using here is based on the Keegan and Garrett map proposed in 1948. It's probably the most commonly used map in major textbooks and is preferred by some because of its correlations to developmental concepts and continuous dermatomes, which are easy to follow. That being said, although it is the most popular of the dermatome maps, from a clinical perspective, it's arguably the most flawed. Funnily enough, researchers have not been able to replicate the findings of this map. Nevertheless, it lives on in its popularity, so it's only right that we're familiar with it. The other map that we're going to look at in this tutorial is known as the Forster map, which looks a little something like this. It was produced in 1933 by Ottfried Forster and is the next most widespread in major anatomical textbooks. It shows a more segmental distribution of dermatomes, especially on the limbs, but we'll talk more about this shortly. One of the main issues with the reliability of this map is due to the fact that Forster did not consistently record his methodology when addressing and recording the dermatomes in his map. From a clinical perspective, it is generally considered to be somewhat more reliable than the Keegan and Garrett map, but that being said, no dermatome map is 100% accurate for reasons I'm going to share in just a moment. Now that we've introduced two of the major dermatome maps, let's take a closer look to see where exactly their main differences lie. All skin sensations are carried by cutaneous branches of the peripheral nerves. In the trunk, each spinal nerve innervates a strip of skin so the area supplied by each nerve is identical to its dermatome. In the limbs, however, things get a lot more complicated due to these pesky brachial, lumbar and sacral plexuses which mix up spinal nerve fibres, meaning the peripheral nerves contain fibres from multiple spinal nerves. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.